uh, Laudatio will be the Laudatio for Arthur Avila, and it will be given by Etienne Gis. Etienne, please. Arthur Avila is a fantastic dynamicist. If I had to give a summary of four centuries of research in dynamics in two minutes, I would say that there are four main stages in this history. The first was initiated by Newton you are given an ordinary differential equation and your task is to find its solutions. It was a remarkable success, the success of differential calculus. The second stage began when Poincaré, at the turn of the 20th century, understood that in many cases, it is simply impossible to find a formula for the solutions. This is, for instance, the beginning of chaos theory. You are given an ordinary differential equation and your task is to say something about its solutions. If possible, something interesting. Like, for example, describing the qualitative behavior of the solutions when time goes to infinity. And the third stage began when mathematicians understood that in practice, physicists never know the equation they want to solve. There are always unknown quantities that may be small, but which may have some influence on the motion. This period began, say, in the 60s with Smale and Tom. You are not given a differential equation, and your task is to say something about its solutions. This is the main area of research of Arthur Avila. Most of his papers turn around the question, what does a typical dynamical system look like? But before I go into some details, let me introduce you quickly to this young man. Arthur was born in 79 in the beautiful city of Rio de Janeiro. He got his PhD at the age of 21 under the supervision of Wellington de Mello at IMPA, the Institute for Pure and Applied Mathematics in Rio. We should know that a Fields Medal never blooms in the middle of nowhere. The approach of Smale and Tom of dynamics has been one of the main forces of IMPA in the last 50 years. IMPA can be proud of this medal. Later, but still very young, Arthur went to Paris where he got a CNRS position. Maybe he could catch there some of the spirit of Poincaré. Today, he holds a double academic position in Rio and Paris, and a double nationality, Brazilian and French. This is a wonderful, successful international collaboration. Arthur is very open-minded. He likes to share ideas with others. He has a huge number of collaborators. And the best I can do for you today is to show you this diaporama of his collaborators. This is a good illustration of the modern way of doing mathematics, taking full advantage of the internet and of Skype. Arthur is a problem solver. 
he wrote many papers solving many conjectures. I'm sure you can understand that it is a daunting task for me, even an impossible task, to give you an overview of his mathematical contribution. Even more so since my intention is not to speak to the experts, and my dream would be to be understood by all of you. I have to be impressionistic and to make some choices among many other possibilities. Arthur is an analyst. Let me go to some examples. Start with what we call a unimodal map. It's just a map from the interval to itself with a single maximum. That's it. I'll assume for simplicity that the second derivative at the maximum is negative. Pick a point x, take its image, f of x, and iterate the process. You get a sequence of points, fn of x. And your task is to say something about this sequence f and x. Where does it go? Where does it accumulate when n goes to infinity? But do not forget the message of Smale and Tom. Don't try to do it for every f. Try to do it for a typical f. Here is the, one of the very first important statements of Arthur right after his PhD, together with Michal Jubic and Wellington de Mello, and improved a little bit later with uh, Gugu. You have a non-trivial real analytic family F sub lambda of unimodal maps, 